Greetings and salutations, how's everybody doing? So, you know, remember the, the toys from the 90s, in this case, Beanie Babies. Remember how much of a humongous craze was it, it was in the fact that, you know, at least everyone at least had one um, growing up. And you know, there was always this big idea of, hmm, this one may be worth something someday. Well, let's talk about it, like, you know, a bit of history, but, you know, we're gonna try to. So, this was actually created by a man named H. Ty Warner. Um, and he was actually, before he got into, you know, creating, you know, the thing, he was actually an actor. And, you know, he did, like, say, you know, toy salesman and all that stuff. Um, he decided to create his own toy company in 1986, Ty Inc. And, uh, originally the idea he was sold life-size plush cats inspired by, um, like, you know, like, by toys one he had sold in Italy. Everything keeps going back to Italy. And they weren't Beanie Babies, though. The cats were un- the, the cats were understuffed with PVC pellets. This wasn't a cost-cutting measure, as some, you know, thought. Um, and basically what they did was basically try to help make them posable. So, yeah, that's one thing it was. Then, in 1993, when the original, like, he perfected this, when the 19 original line of Beanie Babies debated at the World Toy Fair in New York City. And, you know, this one basically was a bit different and compared to his kitty cat ones, is that, um, you know, they had the beady eyes, the animals, like, say, purple platypus named Patty, after, apparently after his ex-girlfriend, Patricia Roche, who ran the company's UK distribution. And, and, like, the difference between them is, like, say, apparently the cat versions, they were a lot bigger. And these ones, these ones you could fit in a, your pocket. And looking back, like, say, people must have had very thick pockets because, you know, it seems like pockets have gotten a bit smaller. Um, and, you know, the price range for the medium babies at the time were $5 a piece. And apparently, you know, like, feel like, say, when you look back, when you think about, like, say, oh, Beanie Babies, oh, they were a huge hit. Apparently, like, say, the qualities that, you know, like, they had, like, you know, the posable arms that they could do, like, you know, like, the, the pellets and all them, um, it made them confusing to retailers and consumers. And then, 1995, Linda, Lena Chabeta, a member of his company, um, came to wonder if a new idea to make Beanie Babies more appealing to consumers by assigning birthdays and poems to each to give them their own little personality to say, hey, this one is different. In a way, that what's helped sell the little guys. Um, and like, you know, like say maybe there was like ones based around a penguin, maybe there was ones based around an iguana and all that. There was a ton of these little guys. And in 1995, the company was forced to continue a lamb named Lovey because of problems with their suppliers. Um, yeah, the plush was a fan favorite, and rather than promising to it have it return, uh, it, that character was retired. And then after which, more of them were retired because of manufacturing issues, but because he knew creating security was the fastest way to drive demand. So basically what he was trying to do was like say, hey, if there's one that you could not find, that was the one that was going to be worth the big bucks because, you know, there's a limited amount of the specific one. Like, perhaps it was, like, I remember that, I remember I had like one that was an octopus, I believe. And yeah, like, say sometimes that would have been difficult to find a specific one that was, you know, very specific to a specific animal or in a way. And apparently, like, say, uh, like, not only was, you know, like, say, oh, people were having trouble trying to find them, um, it could actually end up getting violent. Apparently, um, apparently, like, say, one thing apparently happened was during several Beanie Babies, this is a quote, a quest, my son was trampled by a herd of women racing to the shelves to camper and endangered animal. 
The last Ziggy the Zebra, perhaps. Released, you can get them for about five to seven dollars. Once they retire, the value goes up. In like two years, they're worth like two hundred and forty-five dollars and stuff. He's worth about four thousand dollars. Meet Employee Bear and his owner Joy Brizagella. A Beanie Baby collector resold it to her for about four hundred, and he ended up being worth about four thousand. No. Uh, Cynthia G. La Fure wrote in the Christian Science Mantra in 1998, and a report published in the Hartford Current the previous year recounted a six-year-old girl coming out of a toy store swamped swap with a bloody leg after crashing into an overeager collector. So yeah, like um, at first, like you know, like when it comes to collectors, some folks will just say, oh. When, especially when it comes to like say small toys some folks will just say oh this is adorable like you know give it a big old hug and all that stuff but then suddenly people go like oh there's like not as many of these i need to grab it especially like after this like say um things will be changing and that some of these would be going onto ebay so scalpers we know how, you know, insane those guys are. Um, in 1997, eBay accounted for half a billion dollars of Beanie Baby sales, or 6% of its business. The following year, Beanie Babies made up 10% of all eBay sales. And... So, yeah, apparently this was pretty big. The uh, founder and CEO's pre-tax income for 1998 was roughly $700 million. Oh, which apparently, like, you know, that was more than Mattel and Hasbro's revenue for that year. My goodness. Um, so yeah, like, people were getting big money off of these things by just, like, you know, grabbing the, um, ones that weren't, you know, like, as, ones that were just, like, say, special in a way that, you know, like, people were just, like, grabbing, 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 and people were just immediately just saying, Sung it for high numbers because people just thought this. At first, people thought this is gonna be worth something. Damn, yo, is that a fur coat made out of beanie babies? Yeah, them things is like gold. At least last time I checked, you must be the richest pimp in town. Pimp? No, 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 no. I... That's right, baby. I'm the richest pimp in town. Just like in the way, like, you know, like things that go great. Um, Things would, you know, slowly start to try to jump. By the end of the nineteen end of the nineteen nineties, Beanie Baby Fever had, you know, gone like from this high thing to going down. First I got Pinky, then I got Pinky. I got Pinky and Patty in the same week. What Vanessa catch something? Teeny Beanie Baby Itis. Now at McDonald's, your kids can get teeny beanie babies and a happy meal. Real Thai beanie babies in a mini size. To toss, tuck, or just plain love. One's in each dollar ninety nine hamburger happy meal you buy your kids. This uh, teeny beanie baby itis, will she outgrow it? Not necessarily. <laughs> McDonald's also has extra value meals starting at two ninety nine. After all, we care about big kids too. And so like, you know, like, there will be smaller batches of it for an odd way. Um and then, you know, more animal, like, you know, 24 new ones came out in 1999. Um, so, sales are starting to go up because, um, you know, collectors are going to say, there's too many, there's too many, stop, and all that. And if there's too many, you know, the collectors are going to say, well, wait, if there's so many of them, like, I, we can't, there, there's not going to be a special because there's so many of these, like, what's going to make mine worth more than Joe's or something. Um, and then, and eventually the plan, he, Ty announced plans to retire the Beanie Baby in its entirety in that same year. And then, we've well, got to have money. He backtracked on, on the news by leaving the fate of the lawyers up to an online poll, which you know how it went. It continued. Um, but it wasn't, but, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, the hype, hype, hype for it kind of, like, slowly started to dim. Um, 
and apparently like the sales for these things went from like and went to, down to 90 percent so um when it was in the 90s um and yeah like see some of them are still made today but they don't really attract as much attention because like i will sometimes see them even at gas stations when i'm when traveling so if you can see them like say that in there i mean you might see them at retail stores and all that like say barnes and noble and all that but you're gonna be thinking like say oh i could just buy this at the local you know like a uh, circle k oh well that that makes convenience i guess but yeah do you remember like say the whole um craze of the beanie babies cute little devils but at the same time it was a mess see you next time